There's <laughs> plenty of 6.5. That's astonishing. Right. Well, we've talked enough about fat cat transport this evening. Now I'm going to show you a car that is movement for the masses. And this car is so hot at the moment, it's setting the used car market alight. In fact, if you visit the Auto Trader website, you'll find that these cars are getting the inquiry every 25 seconds. That's seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Every 25 seconds, someone is looking for one of these. So in the course of this programme, 144 people are trying to find a second-hand one. It's the Peugeot 206. So we know that you want to buy one. Let's show you how to. Hard to see why the 206 is on so many shopping lists. It's a nice car to drive. And I don't mean soft and mushy. I mean it's a really pleasant thing to be in. And then, of course, there's those looks. And although that design is four years old, it still looks absolutely great. In fact, I'll bet you, if you buy one of those today, in a couple of years' time, it'll still look better than the rivals. And it's classless, too. It's got so much charm that it fits in anywhere. And even though it's a mass-market car, it's got enough character to make anyone who drives it feel a bit special, which is quite a rare trick to pull off. But let's get down to practicalities. Four years into its life, and the 206 hasn't yet thrown up any big faults. The main complaints are just squeaks and rattles from poor trim finish. The sunroof sliding mechanism in particular can get worn, so check this on your test drive. But since most 206s come with either a sunroof or air conditioning, you do have a choice. You're better off going for one with aircon, like this one. It'll cost you a few hundred quid more, but it's well worth it. The switch gear can also be a bit delicate, so check all the buttons function properly. If, say, an electric mirror isn't working, it may just be the switch rather than the electric motor that's the problem. And on the plus side, the 206 petrols have got the longest service interval of any car in their class. That's two years or 20,000 miles. Engines. I'd avoid the 1.1. It has to work awfully hard for a living, and it's not really up to the job. You're far better off getting a 1.4 or 1.6. Although on the 1.6, watch out, because they can be prone to cam belt problems quite early on in their life. So for me, I'd buy a 1.4, save myself a few hundred pounds, and enjoy the performance. Now, with big German executive saloons, I've got no trouble recommending a car that's done 80,000 miles. But I'm not going to do the same with a small hatchback, especially if you're aiming to run the car for a good few trouble-free years. I'd play safe. Look for one with under 50,000 miles that's still got some of the three-year manufacturer's warranty left. So, for me, the perfect combination would be a 206, 1.4, about three years old with about 30,000 miles on it, full service history, Get one with the aircon, metallic paint, and you can pick one of those up for about five and a half grand. Recap then. Basically, look out for switches and look out for dodgy sunroofs. Yeah. The only thing that confuses me about it is if there's this huge demand for it, which there obviously yeah. is, isn't that inflating the price? I mean, you say five and a half thousand quid for a 1.4. Yeah, uh, the, the prices are strong on them second hand. I mean, you could go and buy something like a Ford Fiesta or a Clio, same sort of age, same kind of spec, probably for about a grand less. But why wouldn't you do that? Because if you buy one of these, A, it's a pretty car, B, it drives nicely, and C, although you spent a grand more now, come to sell it in two or three years' time, you're going to get most of that money back. So it's not like spending a grand, it's like loaning a grand. Yeah, you're no, get it back. OK, well, there we are, 206. Probably the best used buy. Can you say?